The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to take a look uh, a little bit differently today because this is in the news all the time. This is the German Bund, equivalent to our 30-year. But the most important news of the day, I believe, comes out of uh, Sweden or Denmark. Today, the Denmark government decided that anybody that has 1.1 million U.S. dollars in their account is going to be tagged 0.6%. As a fee for holding that money for them. You guys, you have to love that. One other thing today is on CNBC. I happen to be checking the markets real early this morning. And uh, Ron Boone was on. He is one of the, uh, Baron, excuse me, Ron Barron of Barron Capital Management. Handles quite a few billions. And he just said, I just do not understand what these negative interest rates are. He said, it doesn't make any sense to me. And I can't understand what's going on. And then one of the Fed governors that had been at the Minneapolis Fed came on about 30 minutes later, and he said exactly the same thing. So at least there's three of us out there that don't understand what's going on. All I know is it's going to end badly. But whenever that happens, who knows? Something is interesting going on here with the gold folks. This came from the Elliott Wave Theorist, one of our good friends here at TFNN, forwarded this on to me. And it's basically showing that the uh, the commercials and uh, the commitment of traders, you can see that the uh, the the large specs are rallying, but the commercials are net short. So this is very unusual. You can see uh, oh, this goes all the way back to 2011, and uh, we have a huge divergence here. So that could set up a potential uh, correction uh, in the gold market. If you'll notice the diversion in 2016, that also led to a big drop. And if you'll notice where we are right now with that ABCD pattern, and that's also a possibility. I'm just showing you the chart because I, you know, I just look at it intraday and every I look at a four hour chart for gold and I watch it very closely. And it allows you to trade a hundred and fifty thousand dollar contract for roughly uh, four or five hundred dollars. And you can't beat that. That's, uh, that's a pretty good deal. So uh, same thing with the crude oil. Just get down to that four hour, 60 minute chart. and You have a pretty good idea of where you stand uh, on some of these things. So that's what I'm watching here. Here, uh, in the gold this morning. Now, the other thing that's uh, come to my attention from one of our listeners, and that is the comments that come out of Washington from the president. And, you know, he's not a politician, folks. So he, he swings from the, you know, I, I'm a fan of his because I think he's done a pretty good job overall. Uh, you know, he's trying to do his best job anyway, especially with immigration. But, uh, you know, he's just he's just a politician. He's he's not a politician. So he's going to do stuff like that. So, uh, you know, these guys that are professional politicians, you know, every word that they say is polished. And, uh, you know, that's uh, that's neither here nor there. But that's my opinion. I don't think it makes any it goes over the Federal Reserve's head because it's a private corporation. They're not. You know, he could fire him, of course, if he wants to, but it's a private corporation run privately. So, you know, that's the main thing. Yes, that's right, Mr. Bill. The ultimate politicians do anything to be reelected, and we're seeing that in some of the things that they're offering. I, I Well, I don't want to get into the politics. My gosh, between Hong Kong and the United States, you know, it's uh, – thank God we'll have Frazier reruns. Otherwise, I'd probably have nothing to watch on TV. Fortunately, with John here, uh, he's a big fan of Frazier, so we don't have to watch any politics. But the politics in the U.K., folks, I mean, you, you think we're bad here. You should see it over there. That's dog-eat-dog dog over there. I mean, it's really bad. I mean, it's they yell and scream, and oh, my gosh, it's – just uh, it's really uh, quite uh, quite nasty. So that's what we're taking, uh, keeping an eye on here this morning on some of these things that we're watching. Though there is a uh, something that's in a fight for its life, folks. Uh, that is the euro. Let's get this down here. You'll be able to see where we are here in the euro. We're trading down around 110.70 right now. Uh, we're below the 78% level by just a little bit, but uh, you know we're down like eight or nine days in a row now, and it, 
doesn't look like it wants to hold. It could because we're right at that spot right now. And uh, But anything below that 110.50 is going to tell us that we're going to be looking at the ABCD structure from the uh, 114 down to 110 and then up to 112. You just add eight off of that. You're looking at 104 uh, in the euro. And that's our long-term, one of our long-term uh, price objectives is 104. And then, of course, uh, one at 99. Those are the long-term weeklies that we look at all the time. So that's it. You know, the, the pound is still holding up uh, above the 120 uh, area, which is what it needs to do. But all of these could easily give up the ghost. And when you look at what's happening with that U.S. dollar, it does not take much, you know, to make the uh, U.S. dollar, you know, go uh, a whole lot higher. Now, this uh, this one we got from Mr. Z. I think it's real interesting because it's a uh, from the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve. And this is what uh, President Trump was talking about today. And you'll notice here that, uh, <laughs> yeah, we could be buying Greenland. Yeah, uh, you can see here that uh, this is a little different than the one we're looking at, of course, because ours is based on foreign exchange. Uh, the uh, This is trade-weighted. I, I don't know what that means, actually. I'm just looking at the foreign exchange one. It's a little bit differently because this one is broken out, and the uh, the other one with the with the actual foreign exchange markets has not broken out. And I, I this is the one I have to follow because, uh, like Yogi said, you got to go to the dance with the one that brings you, and this is it. So if we get above 98.40, and I don't know where we're trading, we're probably pretty close to there right now, that would tell us. Hey, we got Mr. Z on the line. John, how are you today? Good morning, Larry. Good morning Glad to you. What to can I do for you? Uh, up and at them there, Tucson time. Yeah. Getting ready to fight the big fight. Go ahead, my I friend. What can I help you with? Between... Between yours and Jameson's sleep schedule, I think you guys have got the world covered 24-7. Uh, it's pretty much, but I don't have a schedule anymore. I, <laughs> you know, I, you know, John, I got a wonderful letter from somebody yesterday, a guy named Michael. Michael, if you're listening, thank you very much. It was the longest letter I've ever gotten from anybody, and it was on how to help with sleep and stuff, but I certainly appreciated it. But I've been doing this for so long this way, John. Ever since I was an altar boy, I've been this way. All through high school when I was a scrub nurse and, you know, a, a surgical nurse at St. Anthony's there in Terre Haute. For those five years, I mean, I worked 11 to 7, and, you know, I'd get up, go to school, take two or three hours ap nap in the afternoon, and go back to work. So I don't know any different. You know, I've been doing this this forever. I mean, I don't have an alarm clock. So, uh, well, you know, let me, hey, let's, will, uh, hey, let's forget about forget you, about me. What, what, what can the, I help uh, you with, buddy? I will give you a guaranteed solution suggestion, and okay. that is uh, after 8, 9, 10 p.m. your time locally, uh -huh. Try uh, try fixating on the uh, the hourly charts of the gold futures, the stock index futures, and the British pound. Okay. And uh, if so doing doesn't put you to sleep, well then um, <laughs> then uh, then I'll eat my words. But that that is my guaranteed um, solution. Okay, that that sounds like a good idea, my friend. That it, sounds like uh, a good idea. It works idea. for me every time, guaranteed. Okay. Hey, stay with us, John. we got to take a break, and we'll be back, and we'll talk about the E-mini S&P, if you like. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. 
Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Mr. Z in the den. Uh, John, you had a question this morning about uh, when we were chatting together before the markets opened about the brokerage firms, you know, the possibility of a hint of maybe something being wrong somewhere. Uh, you know, I was involved with the PFG Best thing, you know, many, you know, a few years ago, and then also with uh, uh, John Corzine. And uh, I, I really. The, uh, the I don't... infamous MF Global. Yeah, uh, that's to, for sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> remind your listeners. Yeah. Uh, the other one, I don't see anything to that effect right now. Uh, but I think if you if you use an account like Interactive Brokers or Goldman Sachs or any of those big firms, I think it's okay. It's the smaller firms, you know, that offer these uh, exotic uh, stuff that, you know, these uh, margins of 400 to 1 and some of this Forex stuff that uh, gets into trouble. But most of the stuff is pretty, I think it's okay. But, you know, I could be wrong. You know, I never thought Russell Wassendorf would do what he did. But, uh, man, he put that fraud for 10, 15 years, and uh, nobody caught it. He was just using copy and pasting. You know, I mean, my goodness, they never checked him one time. So maybe they're doing that again. I don't know. Look what Madoff did. You know, I mean, <laughs> you just you just never really know. But I, I really believe Interactive Brokers is probably the safer of any of the ones from what I can tell. And the only reason I say that is they're so strict on their requirements. And uh, I think that's good to be strict, you know, because some of these people that don't know what they're doing can get into trouble and the f <laughs> they don't need any help to push themselves over the edge. That's my two cents worth. Are you saying uh, yes, something, John? You asked that question. I asked that question, that question right. of you earlier, Larry. Yeah. It's pretty much rhetorical because um, you and I – will be the last to be given the answer to that question if, it's, <laughs> if something serious uh, uh, occurs. Absolutely. Uh, but um, given that we'll be the last to know, um, I, uh, I'm asking that question here and now. And the reason I am doing so is, Larry, I, uh, I study zillions of charts looking for clues and I've noticed something similar in three large financial names, uh -huh. uh, all publicly traded uh, companies. That would be Interactive Brokers, Schwab uh -huh. & Company, uh -huh. E-Trade Financial, uh, BlackRock, that massive money manager, uh, State Street Corp, and uh -huh. Bank of New York. 
And yeah. the, uh, the price patterns of each one of those six is making new lows or close to it for all of 2019. Uh, and um, uh, so I don't know the details, but that is uh, a phenomena that is, I find, interesting given the fact yeah. that the stock market had rallied into, what, July 26 to record highs uh -huh. uh, and is very close to those highs as we speak. So I just share that with you as something I'm uh, looking at, asking questions. Uh, uh -huh. So uh, better to ask the questions even if we don't get the answers than just to ignore the, the topic altogether is my view. Yeah. Uh, I, I agree with you, John. I had noticed I don't follow those stocks, but you're right. If they're if the stocks are in trouble, especially if you're if you're seeing one that's in a really big downdraft like we had with uh, Lehman Brothers and you know Bear Stearns back in those days. But you know these are not cascading down like that, so I don't think there's any reason to panic yet. And you know we're we're still within three percent of the high of the stock market. So if this turn does come, uh, it's going to surprise a whole lot of people. So uh, I think they have well, to be um, really. Uh... Yes, sir. With with that said, I did want to ask you on the um, the e mini S and P futures, and and of course its underlying index, the S and P 500 cash. Um, very specific question. Um, we've had this very sharp rally Friday and Monday. Yes. And I'm wondering if you see in your chart work. A level that's just a little bit lower, that if that level is breached, signals to you uh, another good wave of selling directly ahead. Do you have something in mind that you can share with me and your listeners, please? Yeah, John, this my this my two cents worth, but you know you pay for what you get, and if you got two cents up front, I'm going to give you the information. <laughs> Listen, uh, I think 29.09 would be the trigger that I would be watching. I posted the 60-minute uh, chart going over the past uh, several weeks. That 29.40, of course, the 61% retracement. We hit it one, two, three, almost hit it four, five times. We just missed it by a point or two. Uh, at that 29.35 level, but if we get below 29.09, uh, that would tell me that we're probably going to be uh, be heading down. Remember now, we're up four days uh, from the bottom, so that's usually about uh, all we get. From the 6th to the 9th was uh, four days, and then we had four days in this run, so I'm expecting, and as long as we stay above 28.80, I believe, you know, we still got a chance for uh, the market to have a little bit more to the upside. But, uh, you know, overall, I really believe we're going to come down into uh, make lower lows into the middle, middle of uh, uh, late, uh, excuse me, early September, middle of September, somewhere around the 8th to the 14th is what I'm looking at for a potential bottom. And, of course, September is one of the historical months for making lows. Whether that will happen or not, I don't know. We certainly have enough news to make it go anywhere. We go either up or down. The president could come out and say the Chinese thing is done, and bada-bing, bada-boom, we could be at uh, 3,100 in the S&P. You just never know in, in these uh, d days and times. Say, um, I'll, uh, I'll pose one last question. First of all, thank you. And uh, as I uh, sign off, I will pose this question, and I'm wondering if you've got any thoughts on the matter. Uh, last week, uh, Chairman Powell's office uh, put out something publicly that warned any Federal Reserve System people from talking publicly. Huh. And, and pres presumably that doesn't apply to the FOMC members like uh, like Williams or Rosencrantz or Clarida or what have you. Uh, I found it almost shocking that you'd see his office put out such a warning mm -hmm. to the staff, um, uh, you know, a public warning. I'm wondering uh -huh. if you had any thoughts on that matter, and uh, I'll sign off and listen. Thanks so much. Well, John, believe it or not, they didn't call me, so <laughs> I, I really don't know anything about that, John. I really don't. It makes doesn't make any sense that they would do that, but lower-level people shouldn't be commenting because they don't know what the hell they're doing anyway. So I, I just, you know, that's that's be my two cents worth. I mean, I, I think that would be that should be in their contract that they keep their mouth shut. You know what I mean? That that's the way well, I look so much at for your it. Help, but, Larry. 
Hey, thank you, John. And have a great day. We've got Tim Boss coming up at the break. That'll always be interesting, folks. So let's uh, take a little break here, pay a few bills for Mr. O'Brien, and then we'll have Tim Boss at the break. If you have any questions, please give me a call, 877-927-6648. That would be where you could call in. And uh, Tim will be on uh, at the half hour. Well, in four, four minutes, he'll be on, and we'll be able to ask him some questions about some of the things that he's looking at. So I think I don't hear the music yet. Where's the music? It should be coming soon. Maybe so. Maybe I should sing a little bit up until that time. Here we go. We'll be right back. <sighs> Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Chart allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, okay, we're back, folks, and I'm afraid we have a little technical difficulty here this morning. Tim, are you there by any chance? I am here, Larry. Hey, Can you hear me? Shut the front door and raise the rent. <laughs> We're back in business. We've got gain. Go ahead, my friend. Why don't you go ahead and uh, talk to us about what you'd like to talk to us today? And we have a couple questions, but let's uh, hear what you have to say first, and then we can uh, then we can move on. How's that? 
Uh, sounds lovely, lovely. Uh, well, what we're looking at here is an upcoming uh, uh, planetary uh, event uh, that's uh, kind of off the radar for most folks uh, because uh, it involves one of our uh, trans-Neptunian uh, friends, the Kuiper Belt object uh, that is uh, pretty obscure, pretty distant, but we think it's going to have an impact uh, on the markets nevertheless. Uh, what we're looking at is something called Admetos, uh, and Admetos is one of the outer uh, uh, trans-Neptunian factors, it has an orbital period of 617 years. Uh, so this is uh, one of those very, very slow-moving uh, distant objects uh, that we try to take into account if uh, uh, we're looking at uh, longer-range uh, forecasts. Uh, but uh, like many other planets, most notably uh, Mercury, uh, Metos goes through times when it is in retrograde motion. And that's about to start coming up here on the 31st of August, uh, just uh, 11 days from now. And so we've been studying some of the potential impacts of, of this. Uh, in particular, uh, we're looking at this as a uh, factor that we believe will help define a trading bottom for us uh, in the equities markets. Uh, we're looking for a, about uh, 10 days or so of congested trading here uh, with a low for the S&P uh, coming in at about uh, 2881. Uh, so it's basically uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the kind of range it's in right now, uh, but then we're looking for a little bit of a pop upward uh, following that after the end of August. Uh, mm -hmm. We've also done some work with Admetos, uh, which uh, uh, applies specifically to raw materials and prime substances. Uh, and that's one of the reasons we got interested in tracking it with the gold market. And we've done some back testing here uh, and looking at uh, uh, the history of gold prices uh, going back to 1992. So we've done uh, 26, 27 years of worth of uh, back testing here with these Admetos retrograde stations. And so that's what we're focusing on here today uh, in terms of the gold market itself. Uh, and and uh, Admetos will be going retrograde on the 31st of August. Uh, what we've found is that there is a pretty uh, optimum uh, uh, trading uh, potential with this. Uh, if we get into a, a long position with gold, uh, 11 days prior to the Admetos uh, station. That would be today, okay. in fact. Oh, so you, you think you should be long gold today? Exactly, right. And okay, so all right. Have our, well, it was down here. and now it's been rallying pretty good. Uh, right. tell, uh, the question I'm having is, what do those numbers 30, 20, 10, 0, 10, 20 mean uh, when well, you're on looking that at chart, this? Yeah, those basically, basically, what we're looking at here are the days before and after uh, uh, the Admito station. That zero point in the middle of the chart, uh, in this case, applies to August 31st. And so we're okay. looking... Uh, on the left side, the minus 30, minus 20, uh, those are, are days prior to that event, calendar days. And then uh -huh. to the right side, the, the 10, 20, uh, and the 30 doesn't show up on the chart. It's actually off the edge there. <laughs> but uh, uh, we've got uh, those are the days after uh, the Admito station. So what we're looking at with point A on that chart is today. 11 calendar days before the Admito station coming in on the 31st of August. Uh, we're looking at that as a potential uh, entry point. Uh, we would have done a little bit better a couple of days ago, but uh, we're talking today, so that's why we're looking at this as a, a potential uh, trading opportunity here. Mm -hmm. uh, the point B, at the zero mark, there is the date of the station itself. Uh, uh, when Admetos will be going retrograde on mm -hmm. the 31st of, uh, of August. And then uh, we move over to uh, September 26th at point C. Uh, 26 mm -hmm. days after the station uh, looks like a, uh, a, a good uh, exit point uh, for this uh, trade. Uh, so with our back testing, uh, what we've got is a 77% likelihood of this being a positive uh, a trade, and so we like those odds uh, for this one, uh, and uh, it's one of the reasons we flag that particular uh, exit date because it gives us the highest probability of a favorable trade uh, at that time. Now, on okay. the left-hand side of that chart, you'll notice these uh, percentages, and we're not talking about a major move upward here. From today, we should see about a 1.2% gain uh, in the price of gold. So uh, when I checked a few minutes ago, it was trading at about 15.15. Uh, so we could be looking at a, cl a closing price there on the 26th of, uh, of September 
uh, at about uh, 1533 or, or thereabouts uh, uh, in terms of a target price uh, for, for this particular trade. Okay, that's good. Now, I have a couple of questions. Uh, are, the, are you talking about calendar days or trading days uh, when you do this, Tim? Uh, on, on this particular chart, these are calendar days here. Okay. Uh, and so... Uh, and we have a, another question, too. Uh, what, what is your feeling here on copper and nickel, iron ore, and palladium? Do you, do you follow any of those uh, essential metals? Uh I look at them occasionally, but not ha have not tracked them recently. So okay. uh, my, my right, opinion is none of the above. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. That's fair enough. Now, you wanted to uh, talk to us. You have a training program coming up here pretty soon, I think, correct? Right. We've got a, a brand new training program we have just uh, uh, launched here, and uh, this involves uh, some interactive uh, work uh, via conference calls, but also online components. Uh, we're calling it the Astro Trading Intensive, and uh, this has one main aim, is to uh, give folks an opportunity to uh, really uh, get up to speed with the astro trading techniques uh, that we use to augment our fundamental analysis of the markets and our technical analysis as well. Uh, we've got a lot of great technicians uh, involved here uh, looking at uh, the trading patterns and whatnot. Uh, we certainly have a lot of respect for that and try to use uh, the technical tools as best we possibly can, um, but we want to add the astro dynamic to it as well. So what we found is if we can add uh, the uh, astrological perspective to the fundamental analysis and the technical analysis, uh, then we can make uh, much more significant gains uh, from our trading activity with a much higher degree of accuracy along the way. So this uh, Astro Trading Intensive is designed to help you get those kinds of results as well. And okay. to do so uh, very, very rapidly. So we've got about uh, uh, seven hours of online training and uh, some follow-up materials and some, some bonus materials for additional resources there as well with this new program. Okay, how do the folks reach you, uh, uh, Rich? <laughs> I'm thinking of Rich Anderson. He's calling me on the other line. Tim, okay. how do the folks how do the folks reach you? Well, we'll we'll, we'll do our best to create riches. How's that? <laughs> <That's>, uh, <laughs> no, the best way to connect with me is via email. My email is tim at timbost.com. That's t i m b o s t dot com. Just send me an email and put in the subject line Larry. Uh, since we're talking on your show, <laughs> uh, that will well, let me know that uh, you're connecting here about what we've talked about today uh, and say, send me information. Uh, let's get connected. I'm interested in what you're talking about, and I'll, I'll uh, connect with you uh, via email promptly and let you know about this program, and we'll uh, make sure that uh, your listeners get special discounts and all that good stuff as well. How's that sound? Thank you very much, Tim, and we'll t talk to you again soon. Thanks for joining us. We really appreciate uh, thank it. Thank you, Larry. Enjoyed it. Bye-bye. You bet. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South 
African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks. I wanted to mention all of my guests here, whether they have things to sell or not. I, I, I'm not involved with any of their income, folks. I've never taken a rebate from anybody, and I'm not certainly going to start now. So I just want to let you know that I bring that to your attention because I think they have good information. I can't guarantee it, but uh, you know, I don't have anything to do with it. I just want to let you know that. Now, this is a chart of the uh, September crude oil contract, folks. I think it's very important. I sent this out uh, last night about 2 o'clock in the morning, and uh, it was making a perfect uh, ABCD pattern up there at the exact 1.618 spot at uh, 56.50 in the September crude. Uh, it went down to 56.10 and went right back to 56.55 again and then didn't make a new high uh, and then is now trading uh, just about $1,000 lower than that down at the 55.50 uh, level. So that that's a perfect ABCD that lines up uh, and I just wanted to, to bring it to your attention, the fact that the accuracy of those numbers was really uh I mean, I'm, I'm amazed at it all the time, and I, I see it, you know, sometimes they don't work, but gosh, when they do like this, it's really, uh, it's really, uh, it sort of boggles the old imagination as you look. So anyway, we'll see how some of these things going. We, we got down to this magic number now of uh, 2909. Folks, that's not magic at all. All that is, is uh, it's the first major correction that we've had since that big, um, big run up that we had last Thursday. You know, most of these corrections have only been 10 or 15 points now. We've come down 25 handles, so that's telling us that something is a little bit different this time, and uh, that's that should be uh, should be interesting for anybody to watch because you you try to watch what the market is doing because what it's done in the past it's going to do in the future, and that's the the main thing that you want to uh, you know certainly you know keep an eye on as you're as you're looking at some of these things. And we're still healing at this 2909. It is relatively important, but uh, the euro is is breaking. Breaking down, and we're just broke below the 20 uh, 11070 level, and that that is not a good sign for the euro. Uh, we we thinks it's we think it's going to go down to the 11030 level, and that's only uh, 30 or 40 pips from where we are right now. So it's very easy that we could uh, we could easily get to that level. So we'll wait and see. Uh, gold has had a little bit of a move. We went from 1519 down to 1512. You know, quick little seven bucks doesn't mean very much, and now we're just uh, moving back and forth. Uh, between these levels, but uh, watch that 29.10 level in the uh, S&P. I think it uh, it deserves some uh, respect because of the fact that we're down uh, 20 uh, handles from the uh, from the high, and that usually means that you're getting ready to have a uh, significant a significant move off of this area. So watch that rally back if we get one. The rally back shouldn't get any higher than 29.18 if it's bearish, and if it's bullish, it's going to keep going up. So that's the way we look at. It. So that's what we're trying to see here this morning, and we'll move on here just a little bit to take care of one other uh, question that someone had. Um, 
Oh, Tim Best said uh, the S. Well, I I agree with the S and P having a negative bias today, folks. We talked about that just a little while ago because it's doing exactly the same thing, but did between the sixth and the tenth of what it's doing right now. So it's just repeating itself, and it's up. We showed you those. Well, let's do it again. Shut the front door. We can do that without any cost at all. We'll bring this up here so everybody can see it. All you have to do is look what it did. It went from the sixth. To the eighth, you had a, two, a little two and a half day rally, and where did it go? It went up to 29.40. You went from the 16th to the 19th, bada bing, bada boom, 29.35. You can't get any closer than that. So, and that's all right in the realm of the 61% retracement of that whole move. That basically, folks, is a is basically a a correction between the 6th of uh, August to the 14th. That's a two-week correction in a, in a market that topped on August the 2nd or 3rd, and uh, it looks like it's heading down now uh, for the rest part of this. I don't know. It's all related to news. I mean, you know, anytime somebody tweets, these markets could move, uh, you know, a lot, as we've seen before. But there doesn't appear to be any sign of any major panic, because if we look at the VIX index, we're not seeing that at all. I mean, it's still, you know, quite a bit above that area uh, that we always like, which is 12. We're trading it around, I guess we're around 17 or something. I don't know exactly the price today. But that's not showing any signs of a, of a panic. You see that thing move above uh, 25 or 30, then you've got something. But it doesn't, it doesn't look like that. And I, I don't believe the panic will be in the stock market. I believe the panic will be in the bond market. And I'm, o I'm only saying that because of the – my feelings. <laughs> I, I, you know, all I know is that it, it, it's just not right to think of not negative interest rates. I, I, uh, I'll probably they'll put that on my epitaph, I guess. But we'll have to uh, keep in mind whether that means anything or not. So let's move on here. We had a really interesting chart here that turned out to be a real beautiful one. Mike over in Canada sent this in to me last night and showing this uh, beautiful uh, downtrend line that you can see here uh, in the. Uh, West Texas Intermediate Crude. This is on a two-hour log chart. We went right up to that high. We kissed that red line like it was uh, Valentine's Day, and we immediately broke a buck. So uh, that was nothing more than a beautiful. If you look at it really closely from the 12th of August to where we are right now, that was nothing more than a multiple ABCD patterns coming in together, and you'll be able to, to see it all at, the, all at the same time. So that's really what we're, we're keeping an eye on at this particular particular time here. Okay, let's move on here. Uh, boy, they're really taking this crude oil to the woodshed today. That's good to hear. Okay, um, uh, we're, we're now below that. We're, we're now below 2909. We're only not 2908. So this is not acting good for stock. So uh, we'll see uh, how this thing ends up. But uh, we'll have to wait and see uh, what's going on with some of these things. So we're watching here uh, this morning. Let me get one more here that someone's asked me about. And uh, Oh, that is the market for the uh, Dow. Oh, the the Hang Seng. Hold on, we had another big run up here in the Hang Seng. Hold on one second here. We got a question from David White. Let's just answer this question for David. David said, "Did you ever subscribe to the Granville theory that if the ship is going down, the first people do, the first thing people do is to not get in the lifeboats but race to the stern?" I don't know. I don't know anything about that. I I know Joe. I knew Joe Granville. I liked him very much. He and his wife. He was uh, he was at a meeting once with Drexel Burnham in uh, Las Vegas at the C. Palace at one of the directors' meetings, and I'll never forget. He was at the top of his game, and he had a came out with this thousand-dollar uh, bottle of brandy or cognac or something like that, with this beautiful fashion model carrying it. And behind him was a uh, a, a, a circus performer with a little monkey. And the little monkey had the wine opener, and he opened the bottle of wine and he toasted to everybody in the audience, to everybody who doesn't subscribe to the Granville letter all the suckers are on their way and my and there were two directors setting it at, at our table and one of them Bob Zussman he said that's the high tick on Joe Granville and uh, it was and I and later on when I met Joe uh, oh many years later that was in 78 I believe and uh, Lou Rawls and Liza Minnelli were uh, uh, entertaining that night but uh, that was a high tick on Joe Granville he never got any higher than that. And when I mentioned it to him he said yes that was he said that was my high tick of my life was that 
that night at Caesar's Palace, and they paid him like 50 grand, to, you know, to give his uh, introduction and all that other stuff. But when he said that, with toasting all the suckers that didn't uh, subscribe to the Granville letter, that was it. And uh, always, uh, always be a little humble, folks, because these market can these markets can be very humbling for sure. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I want to bring the chart up uh, we've been watching for quite some time. This is a four-hour chart in the E-mini S&P. You'll notice that once we broke below the 29.40 the first time, we went all the way down to 27.70. That was back on August the 5th. Uh, and also what we've done is we went up there and we've test tested that things four times over the last two weeks. And so we're uh, really at – that's why it's so very important. Now, you'll notice the number on the right there, 28.91. Uh, that was the old 61% retracement. Uh, if we go below that, that's that's really going to be negative today because that means you're in the same type of a format that you were between the 13th and the 15th. So I think that's relatively important to uh, 
you know, to pay attention to. So uh, just keep a keep a close eye on it. That's basically uh, what you want to be watching. And uh, my fr frankly, uh, it could easily it, these markets can do anything they want, and they usually do. So make sure that you protect yourself with some type of uh, stop loss. Now, uh, I'm really the thing that I'm. Someone just asked me, what am I focusing on the most today? It's mainly is watching the uh, the note bond spread because that they're watching that closely on Bloomberg and CNBC and uh, you know they're everybody is looking at negative interest rates which you know probably will happen but uh, who knows we'll see um, the uh, the hogs were down there Ruby that's right the December hogs were right down there we said they had to hold I don't know if December cattle held or not because I was too busy to take a look at it but I know the hogs held if you're in that uh, they're holding up relatively well, so I'd make sure you put your stop in on that. But some of those others that you look at, Ruby, like sugar and cocoa and coffee, are not acting very well. That adds to that uh, deflationary environment that we spoke about with uh, the thing that John Murphy uh, gave to us this past week. I'll post this up so you can look at it to see that we're near record lows in commodity prices and uh, you know that's not a good sign. You can show this. This is the one that shows the yield, but uh, that's neither here nor there. We'll have to do one of those at a time as we as we go through and uh, and look at some of these. So let's uh, let's keep uh, keep a close eye on some of these things because uh, they're very interesting today. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. <laughs>